بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله ومن ولا وبعد. Today this is our session number twenty-three, reading from the Tawdih and the Bayan for the Shajarat of Iman by Imam Abd Rahman ibn Nasir al Saadi, رحمه الله. Tonight, بإذن الله تعالى, and we're going to begin the third section of the book, Al Fasl Al Thalithu, which is the final section of the book. Uh, and its topic is dealing with the benefits and the fruits of Iman. Before we begin that reading, let me apologize for not completing the topic last week. And it doesn't look like we have extra time this week to complete it. So we're going to suffice with what we uh, mentioned from the comments of Sheikh Abdul Razak and just go into the topic for tonight which is quite lengthy. Um, before we do that also, um, let, me, let, let us review quickly some of the points that we covered in last week's session. Questionnaire study guide number 22. The first question being, list four things mentioned by the author, rahimahullah, which contradict Iman and must be resisted and struggled against. Four things that he mentioned, Naam. Sin, the greatest sin, and transgression. Naam. Uh, the author, he said that we must prepare ourselves to resist those things which negate or yani, contradict Iman. And he mentioned specifically all of the branches of Al Kufr, disbelief, and Nifaq, and Nifaq, hypocrisy, and Al Fusuq, Al Isyan. Yani, the greater sins and the lesser sins, or as it's mentioned in the translation, transgression. And of course, these are some of the things that oppose Iman, but he just mentioned these yani, as an example, disbelief and hypocrisy and different types of sin. Question number two, list three things mentioned by the author which are necessary to repel the barriers, the mawaniya, and the obstacles, the awaiq to Iman. Yani three things the author, Rahimahullah, mentioned, which are necessary to repel those things which are barriers and those things which are obstacles to Al Iman. Naam, Abdul Wali. Feeling remorse for sins committed and seeking forgiveness. Feeling remorse for sins committed and seeking forgiveness. Repelling um, doubts with knowledge. Repelling doubts with knowledge. Okay, he mentioned the several things. The first thing, three things that he mentioned, the first of them is not mentioned in the translation of the book. And I mentioned that last week, so please pay attention when there's something left from the book, it's really important. The first thing that the author, Allah, mentions is al iqla an al-ma'asi. Yani that a person abstain, fall back from sins. And secondly, he mentioned a tawbah. Yani repenting from whatever person has fallen into. So, yani the first thing that repels that pushes back, that removes the barriers and obstacles, is that a person has to stop sinning. And then they have to repent. And he makes sincere repentance from the sins that they committed. And then he said, protecting and preserving and guarding all of the limbs of the body from that which is haram. Yani stopping the sins that a person is engaging in, repenting from what they have fallen into, and then making an effort, a conscious effort to guard and protect themselves from falling into further sins. And then he also mentioned, yani what? Yani yeah, can come under the next question in reference to um, yani resisting the shubahat, which that's under question number three. Which aspect of iman is harmed by a shubahat? Yani the doubts or false arguments which are superficially plausible. Yani what aspect of iman that the author mentioned, different aspects of iman, is harmed by these shubahat? Nam, Talib. One's creed. Okay, one's creed. The shubuhat. Yani, of course, all of this we're talking about iman, but specifically in terms of the creed, yani, the knowledge, ulum al iman, yani, the knowledge base of one's iman is affected by shubuhat, because shubuhat, yani, it affects the knowledge that you have. A person begins to doubt what they know. Yani, of course, it's our creed, but the knowledge base of iman is affected by shubuhat, because a person has certain knowledge, 
They read something in the Quran, they read something from the Prophet Sallallahu and then somebody comes with a shubha. Yani, which, it might appear to be plausible, it looks like it could be possible, and then they begin to doubt what they already know. So it affects the knowledge base of Iman, and it weakens it. Question number four, the author says, and by the way, the other aspect of Iman that the author mentions, yani, is, that is affected, is affected by the shahwat. Yani, the shahwat affects the person's will, the irada, the will to do good, the will for khair, to strive in doing good and in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The author says, the iradat, the will, the intent, the desire to do good cannot be completed or perfected except by two things. He mentioned two things that are necessary in order for that, you know, that good intent, that good desire, that good yani, will that a person has to do good. It cannot be completed and perfected except with two things. Naam. Uh, Sadiq. Uh, abandoning the things of evil. Resist- abandoning the things of evil. Naam. Resist- resisting the nafs to commit evil. Yeah. And resist- resisting the nafs that commands a person to do evil. Naam. Yani in order for the iradat that are good, any good intention, good will, good inclinations, in order for them to be completed and perfected, a person has to, number one, abandon those desires to engage in evil. They have to abandon those things. They have to abandon them. And the second thing, they have to make a conscious effort to resist, to repulse, to fight against al nafs al ammara bisu. Yani that which is in oneself that is commanding you to do evil. Number five, describe the example of the garden of Iman, of the one who guards against the trials of Shubuhat and Shahwat. I mentioned in the Quran, 2nd Surah, 265th Ayah. What is the example that Allah gives here concerning the garden of the person who fights against, who guards against, who protects himself against these different types of trials, the Shubuhat as well as the Shahwat. Naam. Zawali. Now, nah, man whose garden is on a high place. And a heavy rain will, uh, will bring forth a, a great, a heavy uh, produce. A heavy rain will bring about a great produce. Yani, yeah, it doubled mm. the produce. Will bring about double produce. And? And a light mist. And even if it doesn't rain heavy, even a light rain or mist we'll or, some. you know, huh? Will produce. Will suffice, yani, yeah, for production <clears throat> of that garden. Yani, yeah, the garden, this garden is the garden of the person who's going to have produce, who's going to have fruits, who's going to, it's going to produce benefits. Whether there's a heavy rain or a light rain, it's always going to produce. Why? Because they have resisted and they have fought against those things that affect the garden, that affect the garden of Iman, the shajarat al-Iman, affect the person's Iman. And that is primarily shubuhat, yani those matters, doubtful things that cause yani problems for a person's knowledge base, and those shahwat, the desires, yani lowly desires, desires to do evil, to engage in that which is displeasing to Allah. If a person resists in both of these areas, guards themselves from both of these things, then their garden, yani will be protected from harm and will produce in any case whether there's heavy rain or light rain. It'll be the first to benefit because it's high up. And, uh, and they'll be the first to benefit because it's what? It's a garden that's high up. It's on a high place. So it will receive, yani. That which it needs first, I need the rain. Uh, question number six. Describe the example of the garden of the one who falls into, who engages in, I need who becomes a victim of the trials of Shubuhat and Shahwat. And this is also in Surah Tubakara following Ayat 266. What is the example that Allah gave here now? Uh, the deeds of a person are like the fruits. And when you follow the shape sign, the acts of disbelief, then the garden will be destroyed. Okay, when a, when a person does good deeds and then they turn from that course and, and, and follow shaitan, then this would be the cause of destroying their good deeds, rather, yani it will destroy their garden. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this parable in the Quran about a person who has a garden that has dates and grapes and all types of fruits, and then they reach old age. And they have yani, offspring that are weak, that are not able to do anything, and then a whirlwind comes and containing fire and it burns up. Yani their garden, it destroys it. He said, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said, this is the example of the man who's doing good deeds 
and then Allah sends a shaitan to him, he follows, and he obeys, and he engages in that which shaitan calls him to, mm. and then his garden is destroyed. Mm. Destroyed. Naam. Question number seven, the mu'min, muwaffaq, who is given tawfiq by Allah, is constantly striving in two areas. Can he discuss them? Briefly, two areas. Naam. Sadiq. The after they have repented, they must protect their limbs from committing those sins again. Tayyip. The first area though, I didn't hear the first area, what you said. The first area, did you say? What was the first one? Abandon the sin. Abandon the sins. Okay, even before that, the first area, Nam. That's part of the second area. By actualizing the foundations and branches of Iman in terms of knowledge, action, and how. Actualizing, Yani. The uh, yani tahqiq al iman, the the foundation usul of iman. Yani a person, yani working on the things, the speech, the actions, everything that strengthens and increases the foundation of iman. Yani tahqiq usul al iman. This is the first thing. Working on this side of doing the things that are necessary in order to strengthen and increase and cause iman to grow. That's one side. The other side, he said, is that a person what? that they strive to repulse everything that contradicts Iman. Everything that destroys it completely, or at least yani, weakens and decreases it. Either way, because there are some things that destroy Iman outright. Yani, the nullifiers of Islam. The person goes out of Islam. And there are other things that doesn't take a person out of Islam. It doesn't destroy their Islam or their Iman, but it weakens it. It lessens it. And he said that the person has to make a conscious effort to strive and to struggle against all of these things. And then he also added to that, he said, and then also they must, what? For whatever, wherever they have fallen short, then they have to repent. Mm -hmm. And they must also make an attempt to catch their self when they're in the process of being called by shaitan to catch their self before they actually fall in. To repent from what you have fallen into, your shortcomings, and then also to try to catch yourself Yani, before you fall. The last question, what do the people of Taqwa do when an evil thought or suggestion, five, comes to them from shaitan? This is mentioned in the seventh surah, 201st ayat. Yani, what do the people of Taqwa do when a suggestion comes to them from shaitan? They, the, huh? they, they remember Allah. They remember Allah. They remember Allah's commands and prohibitions. They remember Allah's yani, promise of reward for those who are good in His threat, for those who commit Sin. They remember Allah's commands and His prohibitions, and then Allah causes them to see clearly so that they yani, escape from falling into that which shaitan is calling them to. Okay, so these are some of the points that we discussed last week. Uh, and tonight, inshallah, in this session, yani, this will be the first session dealing with the Al Fasl Al Thalithu, the third section of the book. Remember the first section of the book? Dealing with the ta'rif of Iman, the definition of Iman, its evidences from the Quran and from the Sunnah, and how the scholars of the Sunnah defined Iman in different wordings, meaning basically the same thing. And the proofs and evidences that support that definition. In the second section, we talked about what? The things that bring about Iman, the things through which Iman is achieved, through which it is caused to grow, strengthened, increased. Okay, and in this section now, the third and final section, the author entitled it Al-Fasl Al-Thalithu Fi Fawaid Al-Iman Wa Thamaratihi Yani this section is dealing with the fawaid, the benefits that a person will receive from Iman and the thamarat, the fruits of Iman Before I read, I just want to make a note here Yani concerning this particular section as it relates to the first section as it relates to the first section uh, I mean the previous section, second section. The first section, as we just mentioned, deals with the ta'rif of iman. What is iman? And the second section explains to us, yani, the essential elements of that iman. Yani, what are the elements, the yani, essential elements of iman? What are the things that bring about iman, that strengthen iman, that cause it to grow? And this section actually deals with what a person will receive as a result of that iman. Yani the rewards, the blessings, the favors, the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give to a person because of their iman. Because of their iman. 
So the relation between the second section, previous section, and the third section is that the first, the second section, it entails the things that the abd must do, the actions of the human being that strengthen the iman, that increase the iman, that cause it to grow. And this section deals with the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani the fruits of iman is from the actions of Allah, what Allah gives to the person. The essential elements of iman are those things that the abd does. And the fruits of iman are those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to the abd as a result of that. So those are the things that we have to do. And now these are the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives if we do those things. This is what Allah has to offer for us. Uh, the, the, the author, rahimahullah, and Imam Sa'adi, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy upon him, rahmatan wasiyah, he begins this section by saying, Kam lil imani as sahihi man al fawaid wal thamarat al ajilati wal ajilati fil qalbi wal badani wal rahati wal hayati al tayyibati fil dunya wal akhira. Kam lil iman as sahih. Yani, how many? So many are. Yani, the fawaid, benefits, with thamarat, and fruits that will be given to the one who has al-iman as-sahih. The one who has the correct iman. The one who has correct iman. Yani, the iman that's in accordance with what yani, the author laid out in the first section of this book. The iman that includes the conviction in the heart. And it includes the speech on the tongue. And it includes the actions of the limbs of the body. Yani that iman which involves everything that is obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who has correct aqidah, yani the usul of iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, believing in Allah and the angels and the messengers and the books and the last day and the qadr and whatever branches out from them, the furu' of iman. The person who has this correct creed and then acts in accordance with it, does the deeds that Allah has commanded us with, and avoids what Allah has prohibited. This person will receive many, many benefits, and many, many fruits. That's what we're talking about. Al-Iman, al-Sahih. Fawaid, wa thamarat al-Ajila, wal-Ajila. Yani, which will come now, immediately. Yani, benefits and fruits that a person will receive now. And benefits and fruits that a person will receive later. Fil-Qalbi wal-Badani. Yani, that which will benefit their heart. Yani the, the heart itself will benefit. Yani the fruits and benefits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, yani tranquility and comfort and peace yani of the heart. The tranquility of the heart. And the, the bedin, yani the fruits that will come to the, physically to the person. Physical benefits. Yani the f- physical things that the person will experience. The material things that a person will receive in this world. The benefits to the heart, yani internally, and the benefits externally. Warraha, yani, and the, the inner being, yani, the self, the soul, the mind, the peace and contentment and rest and comfort that a person will experience. Walhayat al tayyiba, and the good life, fi dunya wal akhira. The good life, al hayat al tayyiba, in this world, as well as the good life in the hereafter. Wakam li hadi shajra, al imaniya. من الثمار اليانعة اليانعة والجناء اللذيذ والأكل الدائم والخير المستمر أمور لا تحصى وفوائد لا تستقصى And likewise so many are the fruits يعني for this tree the tree of iman شجرة الإيمان يعني the tree of iman that's in the heart of the believer the tree that grows from its roots, the root being La ilaha illallah. And that root yani, brings forth, yani, the, the roots spring forth yani, into a full grown tree, which has a trunk and it has branches and it has fruits. The Shaykh says, This tree, Al Shajra Al Imaniya, so many are its fruits that are ripe. And its fruits that are delicious, tasty, and that are 
دائم always يعني الأكل الدائم that are always coming non-stop والخير المستمر and good that is ongoing continuous يعني as long as that tree is alive it's bringing forth fruits that are ripe that are tasty that are always present good that is ongoing continuous he says أمور لا تحصى cannot be enumerated يعني these are things that cannot be enumerated cannot be counted والفواد لا تستقصى and benefits that we cannot see the end of them and we cannot get to the bottom of it to the root of it it's, it's unending unending here what the author Allah, is, is saying to us yani in summary is that the benefits and the fruits of Iman are so many they are unending and they are wonderful they are great yani we will enjoy them so much if we have Al-Iman Al-Sahih which includes what is in the heart as well as the actions of the limb speech and actions the actions of the heart and the actions of the limb and the speech of the heart and the speech of the limbs yani the i'tiqad yani the creed the conviction as well as actions that are in accordance with it wa mujmaluha yani the sum total the summary of these fawaid and thamarat benefits and fruits anna khayrat ad-dunya wal akhirah ودفع الشرور كلها من ثمرات هذه الشجرة يعني that every type of good in this world and the next life all of it every خير and the repulsing يعني the repelling the pushing back the removal of every type of evil it is all from the fruits of this tree يعني any harm that a person is protected from any evil that a person is secured from Every good that a person experiences in this world and the next, all of it is from the fruits of yani, the tree of Iman. And this shows yani, the importance of this tree and shows the importance of attending to it, nourishing it, yani, protecting it, guarding it from harm, from that which affects it. It's that important because every khair that we have in this world and the next, every evil that Allah protects us from or repulses from us or lifts from us, removes from us after it befell us, it's the fruits of the tree of Iman. وَذَلِكَ أَنَّ هَذِهِ الشَّجْرَةِ إِذَا ثَبَتَتْ And that's because this tree, if it is firmly established, if this tree is firmly established, and its roots are deep into the earth, يعني into the heart of the human being, it's deep-rooted in the heart of the human being. وَقَوِيَتْ أُصُولُهَا And its roots become strong. وَتَفَرَّعَتْ فُرُوعُهَا and its branches spread out in all directions. Can you imagine a tree that has branches going in every direction? Wazahat aghsanuha, and its limbs blossom or bloom or, bro- or bear fruit. Wa'inat, wa'inat afnauha, and they also, and its fruits become ripe. They ripen. Its, its branches, its roots are firmly established and its branches are going in every direction. And then it begins, it begins to bear fruit and its fruits ripen so that a person can take from them and enjoy them. He said, when this tree is firmly established and its roots become strong and its branches spread out and it bears fruit that ripens, عَادَتْ عَلَى صَاحِبِهَا وَعَلَى غَيْرِهِ بِكُلِّ خَيْرٍ Ajilin wa ajilin. Then it will bring back to the one who has this iman, the sahib of iman, the one who owns this tree, it will bring to him and to others around him and to others that he comes in contact, it will bring every khair, everything of good now and later. Yani in this world and the next life. Uh, before we go on to the first fruit that the Author mentions some comments on the introduction to this section by Sheikh Abdul Razak, son of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al Abad, Hafidhahumullah, may Allah protect and preserve both of them. He says, وَهَذَا فَصْلٌ عَظِيمٌ Yani, this is a tremendous, magnificent section that the author has 
يعني given to us in his blessed book التوضيح والبيان لشجرة الإيمان and he has singled this section out for the clarification of the ثمرات of إيمان and the أثار العظيمة of إيمان يعني he has singled this section out to identify, to clarify for us what are the fruits of Iman and what are the effects and the results of Iman and the benefits, the noble benefits and the praiseworthy returns that come from Iman ala ahlihi, for the people of Iman and all of the things that of good that will come to the people of Iman in this world and in the next life and these are benefits as the author Allah mentions that cannot be enumerated, that cannot be counted, that we cannot see the end of them. The believer will take from these fruits and will pick from these fruits fi dunyahu wa ukhrahu in his life in this world as well as in the next life. Yani meaning that not only will the believer by the permission of Allah and the mercy and favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoy these fruits in the Jannah but even in this world, even in this world. There are fruits that the believer will, will experience, will enjoy in this world. Meaning that, yani the rewards of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person doesn't have to die to receive them. Rather, in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards those who believe in Him. In this world, He gives them His favor and His bounties and His blessings that they will enjoy even in this world. In spite of whatever yani there is in this world of harm that comes. As opposed to in the next life, where will just be the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no harm. The Shaykh he says, <coughs> the share, the the yani, what the believer, uh, the servant of Allah subhanahu wa taala, their share of these, yani, fruits, these bounties, these blessings, these favors of Allah subhanahu wa taala, will be in accordance with their share of iman. Yani, how much of these fruits of Allah subhanahu wa taala a person will receive? will be in accordance with their, how much Iman they have, how they have developed their Iman, strengthened their Iman, increased their Iman. The more a person attends to the Iman, strengthen it, increasing it, getting near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the greater will be their share of these tremendous yani, fruits of Iman. The more a person's Iman is strong, the more their, the fruits will be increased and multiplied. To whatever extent a person's Iman is defective, then their share of the fruits of Iman will be lessened. And just as it is, yani, the affair of Iman, as has been mentioned, yani, in the beginning of this Risala, yani, when we talked about the definition of Iman, he said the likeness of this Iman is the likeness of a good tree, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Ibrahim. In Surah Ibrahim. أَلَمْ تَرَ ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيِّبًا أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتٌ وَفَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ تُؤْتِي أُقُولَهَا كُلَّ هِينٍ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهَا To the end of the ayah. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, did you not think about, did you not reflect upon the example that Allah gives of a كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً A good word that's like a شَجَرَةً طَيِّبَةً A good tree. Its foundation, its roots, is firmly established in the earth and its branches are up in the sky and it brings forth its fruits all the time by the permission of its rub. He said, just as any tree, like the nakhla, the palm tree, or other than it, the better that tree is, the stronger is its roots, the more care is given to it, the, the more pure is its earth, its soil, and its watering being consistent, then likewise the same thing is necessary for the shajra of iman, meaning that its, yani, its roots have to be strong, and its soil yani, has to be good, and it has to be attended to, and it has to be watered regularly. So if that is done, then its fruits will be increased and they will be better, and they will be purer. This is yani, the case of a tree, like the nakhla, the palm tree, as well as any other tree, and so it is the case of the shajrat al-iman. Yani, the more, to the extent that the roots are strong in the heart of the worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Yani firmly establish, giving care to, to realize, to actualize iman in that person's heart in terms of its uprightness, being upright upon obedience to Allah. And in terms of its ubudiyya, its state of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and guarding and protecting and preserving the ibadah and the ta'ah, to whatever extent that happens, then to that extent, yani, there will be an increase in the thimar, the fruits of iman. They will be multiplied. And, there, and the results and the returns from them that the person will harvest, that the person will pick, yani, will be multiplied in this world and in the next life. Then the Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Razak, introduces the first uh, fruit of Iman. Shaykh Abdul Razak says, concerning on that, and then we'll read from the book. He said, here the author, Rahimahullah, yani numbers, yani, yani enumerates to us some of the fawaid of Iman and the thamarat of Iman. Yani the benefits and the fruits that the people of Iman will receive in this world and in the next life. So he mentioned, yani many benefits in this section. He says, Shaykh Abdul Razak says, perhaps you will not find the likeness of this number of benefits and fruits of Iman collected together in one place, in one book, like you, like you found here, what the author has enumerated here. So he said that the author, Allah, has been given tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring, yani, to, act, to present in an excellent, great manner the collection of these benefits along with the mention of their evidences. So here he says, Yani Shaykh Abdul Razak, Hafizullah says that the author Rahimullah has mentioned each benefit followed by that which points to it, Yani the proof for it from the Quran and from the Sunnah of the Prophet. And this is important because Yani from the way of the scholars of Sunnah is that they don't make claims that they don't bring proof for from the Quran and from the Sunnah. And this is the example for us that we shouldn't make claims. For anything, we shouldn't stand upon anything. We shouldn't take a position or a posture except that there's a basis for it in the Quran and in the Sunnah. Not just I feel like it sounds good or I heard from so and so. Rather, evidence from Quran and from the Sunnah. Here, the Sheikh says uh, that the author, Allah, what he has mentioned of the benefits and the fruits of Iman, he mentioned them, ala sabil al ishara. Yani that he mentions here examples of the fruits and benefits of Iman. He doesn't mean, he doesn't intend that he has mentioned every benefit and every fruit of Iman. But what he has mentioned here is just examples of the fruits of Iman. And, the, and these benefits which he has mentioned, yani, cannot be counted or cannot be enumerated. However, yani in summary, he mentions some of them here and what he has mentioned directs us to or guides us to others that he didn't mention. And when we look at the things that he mentioned, we will see that they will also point to and direct to other benefits and fruits that he didn't even mention here. Okay, the first, and by the way, I think today um, we started reading on page 65 in the Arabic text and on page... 63 in the English translation. Both of them on the top of the page. English translation, top of page 63 in Arabic, top of page 65. On page 66, the author, Rahimahullah, he says, number one, فَمِنْ أَعْظَمِ ثِمَارِهَا يعني, From the greatest and the most magnificent of the fruits of Iman is الْإِغْتِبَاطِ بِوَلَايَةِ اللَّهِ الْخَاصَةِ التي هي أعظم ما تنافس فيه المتنافسون وأجل ما حصله الموفقون. That from the greatest of the fruits of Iman is al iqtibat يعني that a person enjoy they have joy and satisfaction from the ولاية of Allah al خاصة بولاية الله al خاصة. Yani that a person enjoy and be totally satisfied, and this is from the fruits of Iman, with the, guardi- the guardianship of Allah al khasa yani the special guardianship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the responsibility to overlook that person's affairs, to guard them, to protect them, to provide for them, 
يعني to look over their affairs the wilaya of Allah al-khasa and this wilaya of Allah al-khasa it is the wilaya of Allah that is for the people of iman as opposed to wilaya to Allah al-ama which is for the creation in general everybody that he has created everybody everything that he has brought into existence Allah cares for it and he feeds it he provides for it he, pre- he pre- prepares for it what is in need of in this world but here we're talking about what enjoying the wilaya of Allah al-khasa التي هي أعظم ما تنافس فيه المتنافسون it is the greatest thing that the people who compete and strive for things this is the greatest thing that anyone strives for and it's the most noble of the things that a person will achieve يعني from those who have been given tawfiq by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, the best of what people have been given who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave tawfiq to and he gave them the knowledge and the will and the intent and the inclination and enable them to act upon correct knowledge. The greatest of what those people who have been given tawfiq will receive, will achieve, yani it is this joy and satisfaction of having the special guardianship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh, he mentions two ayats. I'm going to talk about each of them a little bit and what he mentioned here and then from the commentary of Shaykh Abdul Razak. The first ayat he mentions is from Surah Yunus, 10th Surah, 62nd and 63rd ayat. And this is from those ayats that I always felt. From the first time I read it and heard the explanation of it from the scholars of the people of Sunnah, I always felt this is an ayat that if I didn't memorize the entire Quran, I have to memorize this one. Yani, if we didn't memorize the entire Quran, if we didn't yet reach yani, the completion of memorization of the Quran, there are certain ayats that we should memorize, that we are in need of. You have to recite them all the time. You have to reflect on them all the time. Because they are so tremendous. They are so tremendous. From them is this, these two ayahs from Surah Yunus. Yani, uh, 10th Surah, 62nd, 63rd ayah. The saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, بَعْدَ عُدُّ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَجِيمِ أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ Yani, the author, he mentions this ayah. He says, yani, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the meaning of which is, is it not so? Yani it is a fact that indeed the awliya of Allah, la khawfun alayhim, there is no fear upon them. Walaam yahsanu, nor do they grieve. There is no fear upon them, nor do they grieve. Yani they have no fear of what is ahead of them, and they don't grieve about what has passed, by, passed them by. Thumma wasafahum bi qawlihi. Then after mentioning this about the awliya of Allah, they have no fear, no grief. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them who they are with the saying, Alladina Amanu, they are those who believed Wakanu Yatakun. And they also observed a taqwa. And they also observed a taqwa. They believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all that entails, Iman, that we talked about in the first section. All of that. And in addition to that, Yani they firmed up, firmly established the Iman by Yani attaching to it the observance of a taqwa. And the scholars have explained taqwa in various different ways. It's not my intent to explain it here, but just to remind us that from the simple explanation of a taqwa, it is the fulfillment of all that Allah has commanded and the avoidance of what Allah has prohibited. And he's seeking the pleasure of Allah based upon guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the author mentions this ayat, and then he says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ Those who believe and observe taqwa, فَكُلُّ مُؤْمِنٍ تَقِيٍّ فَهُوَ لِلَّهِ وَلِيهِ Every mu'min that has taqwa, then he is a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a statement that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, mentions in a number of books from amongst them. He mentioned it in the seventh volume, 17, page 17 of Manhaj al-Sunnah. And he also mentioned it in a famous book, that Manhaj al-Sunnah I don't think is translated, but there's a book that's translated with Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah, Yani al-Furqan bayn awliya rahman wa awliya al-Shaytan. Yani the criterion to distinguish between the awliya of al-Rahman, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the awliya of al-Shaytan. And that's a tremendous book, and it is translated um, in, the Arab, in one of the Arabic editions on page 57, Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah mentions this particular statement. Kullu mu'min taqi فَهُوَ لِلَّهِ وَلِيهِ That every believer who observes taqwa 
then he is the wali of Allah. And this requires a lengthy discussion, and the Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Razak, in discussing this, yani, this went on for a long, long time. It was too much for me to write. So yani, I'll just say, I'll, I, I wrote some of it. Inshallah, if we have time, we'll read some of it. But in any case, what is important here is that the awliya of Allah are not people who fly in the air or walk across water or, or do things that are yani, extraordinary. Yani beyond human yani normal abilities. But the awliya of Allah include every single person of Iman who observes taqwa. Every believer who observes taqwa. To whatever extent that person's Iman and their taqwa, to that extent, they enjoy being from the awliya of Allah. And there are different levels of the awliya of Allah. And the Shaykh talks about that in the commentary if we have a chance, inshallah. So every mu'min who, has, who observes taqwa, and inshallah we are those who believe, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our iman and to increase it. And to give us tawfiq, to be able to do those things that we have just learned, which are the means of strengthening iman and increasing iman. That Allah give us tawfiq to be able to do those things so that being believers, yani by the permission of Allah, yani we will increase our iman and strengthen our iman and take it to a higher level. The level of perfection, al-iman al-kamil. So that we can be from the awliya of Allah. Every believer who has taqwa, then he's from the awliya of Allah. Wilaya khasa, yani it's the special wilaya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Min thamaratiha ma qalahu Allah, ma qalahu Allahu anhum. And from the fruits of this wilaya, yani the wilaya of Allah al khasa is from the fruits of Iman. And from the fruits of that wilaya, the benefits of the person who has earned the wilaya of Allah al khasa, from its fruits is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And this is the second ayah that the Shaykh mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah, second surah, 257th ayah. Allahu waliyu ladina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumat ila al-nur. That's how the Shaykh quotes that part of the ayah. Allahu waliyu ladina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumat ila al-nur. That Allah is the wali of those who believe. Yeah, and a person has iman and taqwa, they become from the awliya of Allah. Allah becomes their wali. Allah is our wali. He is al-wali and he is al-mawla. He is the wali, specially, particularly of those who believe. And from the benefits, the thamarat, the fruits of this wilaya, yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila nur is that he brings them out of darknesses different types of darknesses into the light, the one light, the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen. This is from the fruits of Al-Wilaya. A, and then the Shaykh briefly explains, briefly explains what he means by this fruit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing the people of Iman out of darknesses into light. He said, يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ ظُلُمَاتِ الْكُفْرَ إِلَى نُورِ الْإِيمَانِ He brings them out of the Darknesses of kufr, yani the levels of darkness of kufr, into the light of iman. Women dhulumat al jahl ila nur al ilm, and from the darknesses of ignorance, the various levels of ignorance. Some people are more ignorant than others. To the light of knowledge, yani Allah removes the ignorance with knowledge. He removes. Yani the kufr with iman. وَمِنْ ظُلُمَاتِ الْمَعَاسِ إِلَى نُورِ الطَّاعَةِ And he brings those people of iman out of the levels of darkness, of ma'asi, of different types of sin, to the light of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ta'a. وَمِنْ ظُلُمَاتِ الْغَفْلَةِ إِلَى نُورِ الْيَقْضَةِ وَالذِّكْرِ And he brings them out of the darknesses of al-ghafla, of being unmindful, inattentive. And a person is unmindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not paying attention to the law of to the night, the, the nur, the light of al yaqadha being awake, being conscious, and the dhikr, being conscious, remembering, yani remembering yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The darknesses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the person out of are many. Here the Shaykh mentions Al Kufr, disbelief. Well, jahl, ignorance, 
ma'asi, sins and al-ghafla, inattentiveness, unmindfulness. And this is a terrible thing that a person is unmindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rights of Allah and the duties of Allah and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over us. That a person becomes unmindful of that and then they might do anything. And that's why, as we heard in the khutbah today, the great importance of dhikrullah, of remembering Allah all the time, all the time. The person who's remembering Allah all the time is going to act different than the person who's unmindful. Just because of the remembrance of Allah. So important it is to remember Allah when we wake up and when we go to sleep, and when we leave our house and we enter, when we enter the masjid and when we exit, when we make wudu, when we eat and when we finish. This remembrance of Allah is the salvation for the believer, the dhikr Allah. وحاصل ذلك the summary of all of this أنه يخرجهم من ظلمات الشرور المتنوعة إلى ما يرفعها من أنواع الخير العاجل والآجل يعني the summary of all of this is that Allah سبحانه وتعالى brings the people of Iman out of the darknesses of all types of evil يعني everything evil is darkness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the believers from all types of evil, all the darknesses of all types of evil, إلى ما يرفعها to that which lifts it, removes the darkness of evil, and that is anwar al-khayr, yani the lights of khayr, al-ajila wal-ajila, yani that which comes now and that which will come later. The khayr, yani the lights of khayr. He removes all types of darknesses of evil by the light of goodness. وَإِنَّمَا هَازُوا هذا العطاء الجزيل بإيمانهم الصحيح وتحقيقهم هذا الإيمان بالتقوى فإن التقوى من تمام الإيمان كما تقدم تحقيقه. Here the author he says in closing this first يعني fruit of iman he says that these people of iman the very reason the only reason why they are deserving why they have earned this tremendous gift that Allah gives of this fruit of Iman is due to their Iman as sahih bi imanihim as sahih the correct Iman wa tahqiqihim hadha al-Iman bi taqwa and then yani firming up actualizing strengthening this Iman through a taqwa yani the reason why this fruit is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is due to a person's correct iman and then the yani actualization, yani the practical application and firming up and establishment of that iman by adding to it a taqwa, by observing a taqwa along with iman. And taqwa is from iman as well. Now, as we have mentioned previously and established yani when the author talked about this in another place. Uh, let me look at the time. Oh, we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> Long time. So just in case if I forget at the end, any questions that we don't cover from the study guide that we didn't reach, we'll take, take them next week, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak, Hafidhullah, may Allah protect and preserve him. He says concerning this, uh, the statement of the author and from the greatest, the most magnificent of the fruits of Iman is that a person will enjoy the special guardianship of Allah, wilayat Allah al-Khasa. And this is the first fruit from the fruits of Iman. And it is a tremendous, magnificent fruit, a noble fruit. He begins with it due to the greatness of the affair of this matter and its importance. Yani this tremendous fruit, that is that a person enjoys the satisfaction of the guardianship, the special guardianship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah takes a responsibility for his believing servant. And it has been mentioned in the supplication that's recorded from the Prophet in Sahih Muslim and others on the authority of the Prophet wasallam. he said, Allahumma ati nafsi. Taqwaha. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwa. Oh Allah, give to my nafs its taqwa. 
give to my nafs its taqwa yani enrich it with taqwa wazakkiha and purify my nafs purification tazkiya anta khayru man zakkaha you are the best of those who purify anta waliyuha wa mawlaha and you are its wali and its mawla the shaykh says this supplication very important supplication tremendous supplication yani to give us taqwa to purify our soul indeed allah is the best of those who purify he is our wali he is our mawla the shaykh says al wali wal mawla isman lillahi min asma'il husna that these are two of the beautiful names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from that which these two names these great names indicate is allah taking responsibility for his believing servant that allah takes on the responsibility to guard and to protect his believing servant hifdan to guard them from harm tawfiqan to give them the ability to do what is right tasdidan to make them to be on the mark ma'unatan ala ta'atillah and to assist them in obedience to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yani allah takes the responsibility over his servant to help them in all of these different ways and it has been mentioned in the ayah yani the second ayat that the author rahimahullah mentions from surah al-baqarah second surah 257th allahu waliy alladhina amanu yukhrijuhum min adh-dhulumat ila an-nur allah is the wali of those who believe he brings them out of all types of darkness into light this what is mentioned in this ayat is from allah's guardianship over his believing servants yani that he helps them that he directs them to that which is straight and right that he gives them tawfiq the ability to do to successfully complete that which is good for them and in their interests he brings them out of darkness into light and the darkness is a dhulumat are various types and there are many very many here the shaykh abd razak says that there is darknesses of shirk and darknesses of kufr and darknesses of nifaq hypocrisy and darknesses of falsehood and darknesses of sin and darknesses of innovation many many types of darkness allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings his believing servants out of all of these darknesses into the light that removes them and he says that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wahada an-nur that he has made the nur in this ayat singular wahada an-nur yani while he made dhulumat plural many dhulumat he said he made the nur he singled it as one li'annahu siratul mustaqim because it is the straight path one straight path the path of those who allah's favors are upon the nur is one light and it is the sabeel of allah the way the road the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while the dhulumat are many and this is like the saying of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-an'am 6 surah 153rd ayah wa anna hadha as-sirat mustaqima fattabi'u wa la tattabi'u as-subul yani and this indeed this is my straight path so follow it and do not follow as-subul yani the many yani paths of misguidance and deviation so the sirat is one and the nur is one it is the deen of allah which he is pleased with for his servants which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the quran raditu lakum islam deenan allah is pleased with it how then can any human being be pleased with other than what allah has chosen for us yani the islam that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought the pure islam that's based upon what is in the quran and what came in the authentic sunnah and that was understood by his companions radiyallahu anhum ajma'in not the deviation and corruption of the people yani that deviated and corrupted what was brought by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yani this light and this sirat it is one it is that which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with for his servants and he is not pleased with anything else for them as far as the other ways as subul and the dhulumat the darknesses then there are many and here he mentions the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in which he drew a line and then he drew on both sides of it other lines and he said to that one line hadha sabeel allah this is the path of allah and the sabeel of allah is only one path yani the shaykh explaining that the sabeel of allah is one path yani it is one light it is one straight path 
it is the deen which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with for his servants and he's not pleased with any other deen for them. Whereas the other paths, the other ways of deviation, there are many. And on the head of every one of them, as mentioned in the hadith, at the, at the head of every one of those paths is a shaitan calling to it. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan rajim. The shaykh then says, uh, the paths of misguidance and of deviation, yani the separate from the straight path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are many. The paths of dhulumat, darknesses, they are the paths of destruction. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the fruits yani of his wilaya, is that he brings the believing servants out of all of those darknesses to light, yani to his deen, his straight path. And this, the Shaykh says, is from the most magnificent and the greatest of the bounties and blessings of Allah and the favors of Allah, that is, that a person is guided to this straight path. And that a person is mahfuz, protected by the protection of Allah. Wa muwaffaq, and is given yani, success by the tawfiq of Allah. And that a person is rightly guided by the guidance of Allah. And that a person is cared for by the care of Allah. And that Allah yani, makes sure that they are on point, that they are on the mark, and that they remain firm upon the truth, and that they stick to the right guidance, and that they follow the straight path of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala. This is from the greatest of the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the most noble of them. Right? Huh? <laughs> uh, there's pages, <laughs> pages. <laughs> I did a lot of writing. <laughs> Allah Mustafa. I was still writing just now before the salat, <laughs> but I won't be able to read. Okay, let's just read a little bit more of what the Sheikh says here. Yani concerning the wilaya al khasa especially the first ayat, because the first ayat that the author mentions from Surah Yunus, we're gonna. He mentions that here. Qala فَمِنْ أَعْظَمُ ثِمَارِهَا From the greatest of the fruits of Iman is that a person enjoys the satisfaction of the special guardianship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the greatest of what people strive for and the most noble of what yani, the people will receive. He said الْوِلَايَةَ الْخَاصَةَ That means the wilaya that is especially for the Ahlul Iman. As far as al-wilaya al ama then yani Allah creating and bringing into existence of the people, yani whatever He has prepared for them in this world, this is for all everything in the creation. But the wilaya al khasa is that Allah takes responsibility for His abd, bil hivd, yani to to guard them and to protect them with tawfiq, and to give them success in whatever they are doing for His sake, and to tasdeed to put them on track on the point. Wal ma'una and to assist them in obedience to Allah. Wal hidayah and to guide them to His straight path. This is khasa. It is particular, specific, special for those who Allah has given the favor of iman, and for those who Allah has expanded their breasts towards Islam. He said here the author, rahimahullah, mentions the noble ayat from Surah to Yunus. 62 and 63. Yani, indeed, the awliya of Allah are those who have no fear and they do not grieve. He said the awliya of Allah are those who Allah has taken responsibility for. Yani, to guard them, to aid them, to support them, to make them be on the correct path and to assist them, to support them and to defend them. Yani when these two words, al-khawf wal huzn fear and grief, when they are mentioned together in one place, yakunu fi al-khawf muta'allak bima huwa qadimun alayhi al-mar. Yani then khawf means it is in reference to that which the person is going towards. Yani khawf, when khawf and huzn, yani fear and grief are mentioned together, then khawf is connected to what the person, what is ahead of that person, what they are going towards. وَلَلْحُزْنْ بِمَا مَضَى وَفَاتْ يعني in huzn refers to that which already passed by. 
yani which has already occurred. And the likeness of it is in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ahqaf, 46th Surah, 13th Ayah. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهُمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْسَنُونَ That indeed, those who said, our Rabb is Allah, and then they were upright, and then they acted upon that, then there is no fear upon them, nor, nor shall they grieve. And likewise, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Fussilat, 41st Surah, 30th Ayah, the saying of Allah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا That indeed those who have said, Allah is our Rabb, and then they acted upon it, and yani were upright in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the angels descend upon them and say to them, لَا تَخَافُوا Don't fear. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا And don't grieve. لا تخافوا a don't fear from that which you what is ahead of you because indeed you are under the protection of Allah and you will enjoy the favor and bounty and blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ولا تحزنوا يعني and don't grieve over what you have يعني separated from what you have left behind your family your children فهم أيضا بحفظ الله because they are also going to enjoy the protection of Allah and Allah caring for them. And the last thing that we're going to mention tonight, and then we're going to stop here because of the time. Yeah, let me see. It's time already. Okay, so what remains, yani, I'm not going to read what remains, but I'm just going to, yani, we, we will read it next week. Allah allows us to be here. We will read it. But it's too much, and it's not any something that we should race through. That the, 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 the author, uh, the Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Razak, Hafidhu Allah, may Allah protect and preserve him, he goes on talking about the awliya of Allah, and specifically this ayah from Surah to Yunus, and the saying of the author that every mu'min who has taqwa, he's, he's a wali of Allah, he discusses some of this, uh, and then he talks about you know, a discussion related to when Iman and Taqwa came together. And we had some discussion about this previously. He makes some other points here related to the mention of Yani, Alladina Amanu wa Kanu Yattaqun, when Iman and Taqwa are mentioned together, and yani what is the meaning of them and how we should understand them, what that Iman means and what that Taqwa means. And it's a little bit lengthy, it's still a few pages. So we're going to stop with this, inshallah, next week we'll come to that. Whatever questions we covered yani from tonight. Um, uh, that we didn't cover from tonight, inshallah, we'll cover them next week as we complete this. And next week we'll go into the second fruit of Iman, that is earning the river of Allah, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third one, which is that Iman will protect a person from entering the fire at all. Mm. And if a, if a person's Iman doesn't reach that level, it will protect them from remaining in the fire, even if they entered it. Uh, next week, inshallah, we'll talk about those two points and maybe the fourth one as well, depending on yani, yani, depending on how much time we're able to cover it in. Bismillah ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadun la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayk. لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيراً